Aloha and good morning, Grace Central, family and friends. If this is your first time here, I want to say thank you for being here and joining us uh, for our Christmas service here for Church Online at Grace Central. And before we start in singing songs of praise this morning, I want to read out of Luke chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 12. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom his favor rests. This morning let's celebrate the reason for the season that our Savior was birthed, the incarnation of Jesus Christ. So let's all stand to our feet and let's give glory, 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 glory unto our God. Good morning and welcome to Christmas at Grace Central. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. My name is Amanda and I want to invite you to worship along with us as we sing some Christmas carols. And the very first one up is Joy to the World. Let's sing.
We're so glad you're here and would like to ask you to take a few moments to fill out our connection card found at our website, highgracecentral.org. By filling out this card, you can connect with others, join a grace group, and also let us know if any prayer requests you and your loved ones may have. Remember, we're in this together, so let's stay connected together. Well, good morning, Grace Central. Merry Christmas. We're so glad that you're here today. Thank you for joining us in our online experience. My name is Heather. I get to uh, help lead us as we continue to worship God through our giving today. And today is a special day. Today we're celebrating the birth of our Savior. And every time uh, I think about Christmas, I'm reminded of this. Christmas is just the message that when we could not reach God on our own, He stepped down. He came to us. As we give today, let's remember John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. We can give today because God first gave to us. He gave his very best. And I pray that as we give, that we would be blessed in knowing that God is with us, that he's for us. And I pray that all of us have an incredible, very Merry Christmas. Bless you as you give. If you'd like to give online, you can do so by going to our new giving website, gracecentral.churchcenter.com or by downloading the Church Center app on your mobile device. Church Center is a part of the Planning Center program suite and uses a secure payment processor to handle all giving. If this is your first time giving, click the Give button and enter the amount you'd like to give, as well as a designated fund, frequency, and your contact information. If you've given before, you can log in before entering your gift information. Thank you for partnering with Grace Central as we honor God and make disciples. Good morning once again and a very Merry Christmas. This is our Christmas service. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, Go ahead and type it in the chat. Mele Kaliki Maka. Wish one another a very Merry Christmas. And uh, as we wrap up the year uh, here at 2020, um, it's been a doozy, but I'm glad that Christmas 
is right here on our calendar towards the end of the year. December 25th is right around the corner and I want to remind all of us, for those of us who are not having a blessed Christmas quite yet, or for those of us who are missing the Christmas cheer, or Christmas hasn't been merry so far, I want to remind us and encourage us in here in Revelation chapter 21, if you're a follower of Christ this morning, this is something to grab a hold of, that as we put our hope in Christ, that one day we're going to be in a new heaven and a new earth. So I want to encourage us here in Revelation 21, it says, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. What a beautiful thing that God wants to dwell with us. He will dwell with them and they will be His people. And God Himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. No more, no more death. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your word. Lord, help all of us to just pause long enough this morning to encounter your presence. As we read through your word this morning and as we go uh, through the various scriptures, speak to us, Lord. Speak to us. Minister to each one right now that's online. Minister to their needs. Minister to where they're at. Bless their family that they can have a blessed Christmas indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a beautiful uh, scripture verse to hold on to. That one day there'll be no more death, no more mourning, no more pain. That he will wipe away every tear. And I want to remind us that we only can have that because Christ resurrected from the dead. Uh, look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To what? To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. For you, for those who put their hope in Christ Jesus and the finished work in Christ Jesus who resurrected from the grave. And Christ would not have resurrected from the grave if he wasn't crucified on the cross. Look what Peter uh, later on says. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross. So what? So that we can be dead to sin. Our sin paid for, our debt paid for once and for all. So we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. For by his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds, you are healed. See, I thank God that Jesus came here on earth to live the perfect life and died the death that we should have died in our place. Why? So that our sins may be forgiven and that we could live for what is right. There would have not been no crucifixion if Jesus did not come here. And hence the season that we're in right now called Christmas. Let's look at Luke chapter 2 verse 6. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. We're talking about Mary. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger. Because there was no room for them in the inn. There was no room in the guest room. Remember they were traveling because a census was taken. And as they were traveling, all the hotels, all the rooms were booked. So hence, we know the manger scene. We're going to get to that here in a moment. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Say, all the people. This news is for all the people. Present, past, future. For you and I, for all the people, this is good news. Christmas is a time to celebrate. It's a time to be merry uh, because there's good news. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. What a great thing that we're celebrating Christmas today. Uh, we're celebrating that Christ the Savior is born. That He left heaven to be here on earth. To be with us and so many of us uh, we set up nativity scenes right you've seen a nativity scene you may have a nativity scene set up at home on your coffee table 
uh, Merry Christmas tree. Uh, some of us, uh, and you've seen it before, the, the nativity scene is set up on lawns. And today I want to talk about this nativity scene. We're going to pause and want to preach out of using this nativity scene. Uh, this whole thing called the nativity scene is first credited uh, to St. Francis of Assisi back in 1223. And we know the setup and here's a picture of the nativity scene that I've set up um, here at my place just to show you how the nativity scene would look like in the center and everyone's looking at the center of course is baby Jesus yeah baby Jesus I don't know why everyone talks about baby Jesus everyone's voice changes go baby Jesus you know, cute baby Jesus and around baby Jesus is uh, earthly mom and dad Mary and Joseph uh, then you have the shepherds, right? The shepherds were there. And it's interesting that the shepherds were the first ones that the angel came to proclaim. And you got to remember that the shepherds uh, were the low class. They're the ones working overnight. They're the ones uh, that were working really hard. And you would expect them to be the last ones to find out that the Savior was born. But the angel chose them, the poor, the lowly, the hardworking, overworked ones, and that's a whole message in itself. But the shepherds were there uh, to see uh, Christ being born in a manger and uh, po possibly in a cave. We also have the three wise men, uh, the three kings, uh, the three magi. Uh, traditionally, we say three uh, because we know at least there were three gifts that they came with. We don't know if there were three, thirty. Uh, we don't know how many of them, but we know there were wise men from the east that traveled uh, all the way. They followed the star that led them uh, towards uh, Jesus. And uh, honestly, traditionally, we have this nativity scene set up. They weren't probably there when uh, Jesus was born. In fact, they came probably when Jesus was about six months to up to two years. Uh, we don't know. Um, but they weren't there for the birth of Jesus, but we include them in this nativity scene. Uh, that, that's a great story uh, in of itself. Um, we have the angel uh, who's in the back as well. Uh, we have the barn animals uh, th that were there to see Jesus. And notice that the nativity scene is set up in such a way that the focal point and at the center is Jesus himself. I want to preach out of this uh, this morning. I want to preach out of this and say this. Not too concerned about the nativity scene being set up in our homes, but I look at how the nativity scene is set up in our lives, in our hearts. And the nativity scene um, in our hearts, if Jesus is at the center and the focal point of, G uh, of our lives is Jesus Christ at the center, no matter what happens all around us, there will be that inner peace. There will be that, that peace and that rest, that knowing Jesus in the midst of everything that's going on around me. You're in control. That my eyes are fixed on the author and perfecter of my faith. And I want to propose this. Maybe in 2020 you've experienced this because I've sure experienced this. That at times Jesus was not at the center of my life. And I was wondering why are, why are things happening in my life and the circumstances around my life going haywire and I don't feel at rest, at peace. And I know Jesus. And I know Jesus. And many of you who are joining here this morning who are here can say, hey, I'm a Christ follower. Hey, I've been, I've been going to church, Pastor, than, longer than you've been alive. And we wonder why does it seem like my life isn't working out the way how I think God told me it should work out. I want to propose this. Maybe we have all the pieces of the nativity scene, but maybe the, our nativity scene in our lives aren't set up right. And I like that. The alarms are going off right on cue, right outside. And maybe that should wake us up. And maybe that should be an alarm to both you and I that maybe we have the pieces in our life, but they're not set up right. We have Jesus in our life, but he's not at the center of our lives. I want to propose that just maybe Jesus is in the picture but not at the center yet something else or someone else is at the center of our lives 
So I want to look at a few different things. Here's a picture of the shepherds being at the center. And you can still see Jesus is still part of the picture, but Jesus is not at the focal point. Jesus is no longer at the center. God is not at the center of our lives. But instead, everything focuses towards the shepherds. And I think the shepherds here, uh, for us students, represent you know, our education and our study. For, the of us, for those of us who are working, it's, those, it's our jobs. And there's nothing wrong with education or, or getting a job. We should be getting and furthering our education. We should be working for, you know, the, the scripture teaches us that if we don't work, we don't eat and we need to be working. But the thing is, our work can't be our focus. Everything can't be revolved around our work or our studies. That can't be at the center. And we wonder why, why are things in, in, my, in our minds, in our hearts, in our lives kind of out of whack, uh, kind of out of place? It's because we placed the shepherds, we placed our work at the center of our lives. That's why for those of us who are workaholics, when we go home, we've given our very best at work and we, give, we have nothing else left to give to our family, our friends, and our loved ones. Let's look at the angel. Let's place the angel at the center. Jesus is still in the picture, but not at the center. And, you know, the angel can represent maybe other gods or other idols. Even sometimes we place spiritual leadership at the center of our lives and we worship them instead of Jesus. And we say, no, but I still have Jesus in my life, but yet Jesus is not at the focal point. Um, let's look at the wise men. Right, the wise men. Now, if you look at the elaborate set out of all the pieces, they should be at the center, right? I mean, look at them. And they come bearing with gifts, gold, incense, myrrh. And here, you know, some say they were kings, so royalty. And it's interesting that these three wise men came uh, and bowed down before Jesus when Jesus was laying in the trough when he was born. They acknowledge Jesus being the king of all kings. But sometimes we have the wise men. Then the wise men represent popularity, fame. You can even include their gold and riches. And there's, n there's nothing wrong to having things and, and attaining wealth. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is something wrong when that is at the center of our lives popularity and fame we don't set out to say hey I want to be popular and famous but yet when we look at our social media accounts we base our emotions and feelings of the day of how many likes right how many clicks how many hearts we receive through our social media accounts and we say but I still have Jesus in my life I still have Jesus in my life let's look at Mary and Joseph and this one may feel like this should be right out of all of them. And Mary and Joseph will represent our relationships, right? Our relationships with our spouse, our family. And, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, right? We should be loving our spouses and loving our family, loving our parents, our children. We should be loving them. But we can't have them at the focal point and the center of our lives. But, but I have Jesus. Jesus is still in my life. Jesus is still God, but he's off to the side. And we focus on our family. And it almost sounds right, but here's the thing. We often wonder that those who are in the similar relationships with spouses, with children, uh, with, with parents, and we wonder why they don't have the same emotions as, as we do when family lets us down. Well, because the family is not the center or the focal point. And here's the issue when we put our family at the center and the focal point of our lives. We place expectations that they can't fulfill. We put expectations on our family members that they weren't supposed to carry and that only God could fulfill. So many times we do that, don't we? We put false expectations on our spouses that they can't and weren't ever created to fulfill where only God, God 
can fulfill those expectations. All right, many of you guys are saying, all right, all right, I got the point. I got the point of the nativity scene set up in my life. I want to do one more. Can we do one more? Let's put the animals. Here we go. Obviously, the original set did not have uh, these animals, so I pulled these from another set to include it in this nativity scene. Sometimes we place our animals, uh, and they're not just our pets, right? Uh, some of us have our pets at the center, but let these animals represent not only uh, just pets, but also our hobbies, our, our recreation, and things of enjoyment. And it's not like God doesn't say, hey, you can't enjoy animals or enjoy hobbies or recreation. No, in fact, he created them for our enjoyment. Really? In fact, I just want to pause right now because I know during the season that some of us have lost um, some of our, our pets, which are family to us. And once again, I want to extend condolences uh, to those that, that have uh, lost uh, their loved ones, um, part of their family uh, during this season. And for us, again, whether it's pets or hobbies or recreation, nothing wrong with having them in our lives. But we wonder at times, why does it feel like my life is in disarray when we have, whether it's our hobbies, our recreation, whether it's our family, whether it's other people, fame, popularity, or even our work at the center, where truly Jesus, Jesus needs to be our focal point and our center. We're in a series called Blessed Christmas, and I truly believe this has been a blessed year. It's been a challenging year. From the very beginning of this year, with everything that's going on in the world today and how it has been affecting you and I personally in our lives, many have lost jobs. Many have dug into their savings. Many have gotten sick. Many have cost their lives. There's so many transitions and so many changes uh, this year. But for those who have the peace and the joy and the rest who are in the same storm that we're all in, and you're wondering what's so different about them, it's because they've placed Jesus at the center of their lives. In fact, there's a Bible verse that teaches us this, right? Just like our universe, everything in our universe uh, revolves around the sun, right? The earth revolves around the sun and all the various planets that we know of that's orbiting the sun right now its central focus point and how gravity the sun the temperature and everything is uh, determined on every planet is based upon its proximity to the sun at the center in the same way in spirituality here if for those of you who call yourselves followers of christ and christianity everything revolves around our personal relationship with jesus christ if you have your Bibles, go ahead and look at this uh, Bible verse found in Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse 15. And the verse talks about this, where everything revolves around Jesus. And I don't need to preach this to you because 2020 has already preached this to you. Right? That there is a need that life was already uncertain to begin with and everything just revealed to us this year that how uncertain life was so what's wrong what's wrong why why, why can't we have a blessed christmas why, why don't i feel blessed why don't i have that peace that joy that rest that god is talking about maybe well i want to propose this maybe we have all the pieces but our pieces aren't set up right it's just set up wrong and you know, I love my job where this is the, one of the best things I love about my job is helping people put these pieces in the right place. It's having all the pieces, right? Get an education, get a job. Yes, uh, be the one so you can find the right one. And when you find the right one, you, you remember and be reminded that you married the son of the living God. You married the daughter of the living God. And then when you have children, that you're entrusted by God to have in, in, in your house to steward yet another son, another daughter of the living God. To steward what God's given us, our gifts, our talents. And to have all these things 
placed in the right place where Jesus is at the center and focal point of our lives. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. And we look at this son and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this son and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, everything created, everything created, whether it's, it's our pets, whether it's our hobbies, whether it's uh, the people in our family, everything that's created, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything that got started in him finds its purpose in him. He was, the, he was there. He was there before any of, any of it, any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. Up to this moment. I want to just summarize this. What Paul is writing through the scriptures saying, see, all the way up to this moment finds its purpose in Christ Jesus. When you read your Bible, if you haven't read your Bible, we're going to start the new year in 2021. I want to say start reading your Bible today. So that in 2021, you get into the habit of reading your Bible every single day. In 2021, we're going to go through the Bible together. We're going to start from the beginning of the Old and New Testament. We're going to go through 2021. So by the end of 2021, you and I, we, we would have read the entire Bible throughout the whole year. I encourage you, start reading your word to realize page after page after page. And I love Colossians. Read Colossians, just four chapters long. It's very practical. The, the Bible teaches us how to do this thing called life. And in Colossians, there's some practical things. And where everything is held together, here in this, these few verses says, it's being held together for the, by Him and for the purposes for Him. I believe if things aren't working in your life right now, maybe you're missing some pieces, some pieces to your nativity scene. And I'm not talking about the nativity scene that's sitting on your coffee table, but the nativity scene that's set up in your heart, the nativity scene that's set up in your life. And there are many of you that are here that say, well, I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I have Jesus in my life. Well, maybe you have Jesus in your life, but Jesus is not set at the focal point and center in which all things revolve around. Maybe you have the pieces and you're wondering, why doesn't that look right? Why doesn't it feel like? I want to propose this morning that we get our pieces set right. And not only will it look right, that as we set up our nativity scene in our own hearts, that it will work right. I want to give you three simple steps um, as we close this morning. And the first one, the first one, is invite Jesus to be the center of your life. Not just Jesus being my Sunday God, or not Jesus being my Christmas and Easter God, and not just Jesus in the morning or right before I go to bed at night, but Jesus at the very focal and center point. We need to invite him, and that's a key word. We need to invite him. Jesus says he's knocking at the door of our hearts. See, Jesus is not just going to come and uh, just invite himself in. He's not just going to knock the door down and say, I'm going to come and rule and reign in your life. He needs to be invited in. And the beauty is the holy and righteous God this morning wants to enter into a relationship with you, but He needs to be invited. He needs to be invited. And what a beautiful thing that outside that door of our hearts is Jesus wanting to come into our lives and to be at the very center of our lives. What a beautiful thing, the holy and righteous one, our protector, our provider, our hope in time of need, right? The the awesome God wants to be at the center of our lives. Invite Him in. Invite Him in today. Secondly, not just invite Him in and place Him at the center, but also invite Him to every area of your life. Every single area of your life. I want to encourage you. Maybe our way isn't working out in 2020 because we haven't 
invited him into every area of our lives. We haven't placed him at the center. Invite him into every area of our work, in our relationships, our finances. Going into 2021, I want to encourage you and I, let's invite him. Let's invite Jesus Christ, the holy, righteous God, into every, every aspect of our lives. We've got to go all in. All in. All in in 2021. All in to end this year so we can begin the new year being a follower of Christ, devoted unto Him. All in. If you haven't been part of the growth track here at Grace Central, I want to encourage you. The first Wednesday of January, we're going to start our first class. Get in the growth track. If you're not in a group and you're not journeying alongside with one another, with someone else of the faith, maybe this is the year in 2021 to get in a group. Man, we got to go all in. We got to invite Jesus into every area of our lives that as we journey alongside one another we can be encouraged challenged and lifted up thirdly thirdly ignite a passion ignite a passion to know him more ignite a passion and this desire inside of you to know jesus more in these coming days in the new year and i love that we end the year with Christmas to celebrate and have times of exchanging gifts, singing the carols and praises unto God. And we end it on a high note. And then the next week we begin a new year, a new start to a new calendar year. What a beautiful thing that God has gifted us with. Ignite a passion to know Him more. I want to close with this. Let's set up our lives right. Let's have Jesus at the center of our lives. And everything that orbits around Jesus, our lives, whether it's work, schooling, relationships, our pursuit of hopes and dreams, and everything around us, may it surround and orbit and circle around Christ being at the center as we focus on Him this morning. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. We thank you for this holiday season. God, I just want to pray right now for those who have not invited Jesus into their lives. In fact, if that's you this morning, uh, I want to pray a prayer with you. And it's a simple prayer to invite Jesus into your life as Lord and Savior. And the prayer goes like this. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus for me. The greatest gift that I could ever receive that it can have forgiveness of sins this morning. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be King of my life. Be Lord of my life. This morning I turn away from my sins and I turn to you. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me and paying the debt of my sins that I could never pay. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 In your own words, just go ahead and pray a prayer unto God to invite Him and to be not only part of the scene, but at the focal point. And for some of us, I believe that's the prayer we need to pray this morning, is to place Jesus at the center of our lives. In closing, one last prayer. Would you pray with me? Father, forgive us, Lord, in 2020 that we haven't set up our own nativity scene in our lives in a way that's honoring unto you. But Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your grace this morning that reveals to us, Lord, that we need to place Jesus, the Son of the living God, at the center of our lives again. So Lord, this morning, this morning we rededicate ourselves unto you. And Jesus, we place you as Lord of our lives, the center of our lives, in which everything, from our work to our relationships, to our hopes and dreams and our every inner thought of our lives will center around you, Lord. And God, we thank you for this Christmas season. What a blessed season it is, Lord, that you don't hide yourself, but you continue to reveal yourself true, real, and unique to each and every single one of us. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Type it in the chat. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, go ahead and, uh, that prayer to invite Jesus, go ahead and click on there, the invite, uh, uh, 
click on there that I prayed that prayer for the first time and someone is going to come and join with you alongside with you to help you on your journey on your relationship with Christ uh, if you're here you need further prayer just click on there uh, on the platform hey I need further prayer this morning and we're going to stay on for a little bit and meet the various needs that are here online um, otherwise in closing we're going to close our series blessed christmas because it's just a couple of days after the day of christmas day next week sunday i want to invite you back here online or starting tomorrow uh, monday morning registration for our in-person service will open up and we're going to close out the year strong we're going to close out the year to bring this christmas cheer uh, the message of god's hope his grace the joy and peace that we can have with Him. I'm going to carry that into the new year. Before we leave, I want to say a big mahalo and a big aloha and farewell until we see one another again to Heather and Jonah Heck. This is their last Sunday uh, with us here at Grace Central. Um, they get on a plane tomorrow uh, to head into their next season. Uh, uh, next season in serving him and advancing his kingdom and making disciples and we're so super excited for them grace central let's continue to uh, be in prayer with them for them and continue to support them thank you heather thank you jonah uh, for the season uh, here at grace central uh, together even though we're going to be geographically apart we're still on mission to honor god and make disciples grace central family friends thank you for being here this morning have a great week and have a blessed Christmas indeed. Mahalo.